Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and this is my April wrap up. Since I had the whole month of April off of work because of self-isolation and not being an essential worker, I felt like I was reading a ton. Like I felt like I was reading nonstop. And the really strange thing is I ended up reading quite a bit less than I read in March. So I was a little bit shocked by that. So let's go over a couple statistics before I get into the books that I read this month. So for the month of April, I read a total of 6,800 129 pages. 2,193 of these pages were from audiobooks that I read and that makes a total of 16 books I read. Seven of these were full-length novels like ebooks or physical books that I read. One of them was a graphic novel and eight of them were actually audiobooks. This included 12 adult books, two young adult books, and two middle grade books. Seven of these books were fantasy four were sci-fi. I read one graphic novel that was a contemporary and three of these were technically classified as horror. As far as my ratings for the month go, my average rating for this month was definitely a little bit lower than last month, which I'm not shocked at all considering I gave a lot, a lot of middle of the road or lower ratings this month. So my average rating was a 4.07 stars out of five. And this included one two star book, two three star books, three 3.5 star books, one four star, one 4.25 star, two 4.5 stars, two 4.75 stars, and four five stars. So as you can see, I get pretty particular with the ratings I give, but I did have four five star books and I read my new favorite book of all time this month. Hopefully that video will have already been up by the time you guys see this. So that's exciting. So now let's just get into all of the books that I read. Once again, I'm going to start with my least favorite of the month and then work my way up to my favorite of the month because I seem to like doing it that way a little bit better. Save the best for last. I'm that kind of person. So the book that I enjoyed the least this month is actually Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card and I gave this book a two out of five stars. I really did not enjoy my time reading this book hardly at all. I enjoyed it a lot from the beginning and then my feelings just went downhill. So this is a sci-fi novel that's following our main character Ender and in this world that they're living in there's sort of this war with basically this like alien race they need to find a perfect general basically to defeat their enemy and through like genetic experimentation and manipulation and different things like that they have found ender so ender thinks he's playing video games and the story follows him and then we also get different perspectives from his brother and his sister all about all of his battling and training and ways that he's being manipulated and things like that i don't know you guys i know that a lot of people love this book i'm not saying don't read it it just really i could not get into it and i did listen to the audiobook of this so maybe that's partially why because the narrator was like a 40 year old man and our main character is six i believe when this starts and he he stays there for years and years so quite a lot of time passes throughout this novel but i can't get over the fact of like what these characters were doing at supposedly such a young age I know it's sci-fi, I know it's not real, but I couldn't, I couldn't look past it. It just all felt really silly and very, like, you can give me the most whimsical weird magic and I'll be like, yeah, I believe that. But then you give me a six-year-old character who's supposed to be doing all these crazy things and I'm like, that's not real, that can't happen. I don't know. Maybe it's for you, it's not for me. There were a lot of other things I didn't really love about this as well that I know I'm not alone in after reading quite a few Goodreads reviews, but it just wasn't for me. The next book I rated a three out of five stars and that is The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. I did enjoy this significantly more than Ender's Game. I'm sure you guys have heard of this book before. It was originally told as like a, a radio broadcast, I believe, which I heard caused like mass hysteria. And then somebody else told me that that was like false and a rumor. So I'm not sure. If you guys know, comment down below and let me know like whether that was true or not. But anyways, I have seen the adaptation of this multiple times like when I was younger. I'm really really glad that I had seen that prior to reading this because it helped me be able to visualize things a bit more. Basically, Martians are invading England in this book and just everybody's like panicking and we're following a couple perspectives. We're definitely following more of like the brother's story in this than in the movie. So that's one of the main differences that I found. But I did, I talked about this a lot in one of my reading vlogs. I'll try to link it above or below if I remember. But I liked 
how the author described the Martians and just a lot of things that I was unclear about from the movie as far as like the red everything that I thought was blood and I think that it was it was done in a really good creepy way the way that the author described what the Martians were doing to the humans but the what the thing that I will say detracted from my enjoyment of this novel is you just felt so outside you're never connecting with the characters whatsoever you just feel like you're looking at everything from the outside almost as if you're watching a movie you don't really get a whole lot of insight into the characters like personal feelings I guess that much so it's definitely very scientific and I did enjoy that that's why I still gave it a three out of five stars I think that it was really good for what it was trying to accomplish but it just doesn't appeal perfectly to my taste I wish that we would have gotten a little bit more of the human emotional experience along with some of the scientific writing. Next, I also rated The Institute by Stephen King, three out of five stars. Going into it, see, I put it on my list because I wanted to read something newer from Stephen King, but I know I shouldn't have because I don't like kids with superpowers. I just will rarely ever like that. I like X-Men and that's about it. Like that is the closest I get to liking kids with superpowers. But anyways, so we're following our main character who, I don't know how to say this without spoilers. So I'm just going to say his parents are murdered and he's taken to this institute where kids with different levels of like telepathic and telekinetic powers are kept. We're basically following their lives in this institute and the things that are being done to them. And surprisingly, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel much of anything at all while reading this book. Even though some of the things being done to the children in this institute were pretty terrible, I just didn't emotionally feel that the way that Stephen King usually is able to affect me on an emotional level. I don't know, I just, he, I didn't care about the friends that he was making. I found a lot of the ending to be sort of unrealistic in the way that things were resolved or just sort of questioning how events actually took place thinking that some of those things didn't make that much sense. I definitely still recommend this book to readers who maybe don't want so much horror or graphic violence or things like that from Stephen King. If you just want a light mystery, then maybe check out this Stephen King book, but it's not for me. I like things that are darker and more disturbing and more graphic or violent. So it just missed the mark for me and it wasn't bad. The writing was still good, but it just, I didn't feel anything towards it. It was so mediocre. That's why I gave it a three out of five stars. Next we have World War Z by Max Brooks. And I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. I listened to this on audio as well, which if I didn't say, I also list, I've listened to everything I've talked about on audio so far. So Ender's Game, The War of the Worlds and The Institute were all audiobook as well as World War Z. This was a fantastic audiobook. So if you're going to read this, I highly recommend picking up the audiobook because it is a full cast of narrators. Since we're following perspectives from all over the world we get a lot of different accents and things that make it seem more authentic so I really appreciated that if you've never heard of World War Z this is very different than the movie adaptation which I do really appreciate but I did enjoy this book for what it was I liked that it was like personal accounts rather than like one cohesive story in a cohesive timeline we kind of jumped all over the planet and we got to see how different countries were dealing with this outbreak that supposedly originated in China and created these uh, zombies. So I will say there was one chapter I enjoyed a lot more than the others because it definitely went more into detail about the zombies themselves. And I find I found myself being very creeped out by that chapter, but for the rest of the time, I thought it could have gone into more detail about the zombies themselves. But I think that the book really captured the amount of panic and it dealt with not just how like citizens would deal with this but like a political level and on a military aspect and just your ordinary citizens so i think it was interesting to have the, those different perspectives and the different perspectives i think it even touched on like an economical level so yeah i thought that this was a fun quick audiobook to listen to and i do recommend it if you're interested in more zombie stories next we have peter pan by jm barry which I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I don't think I need to give a synopsis for this since we've all probably seen the Disney movie. Yeah, this was so much different than what I had remembered from the movie, which it had been a long time since I had seen it and I actually watched the adaptation after I finished the audiobook, so I listened to this on audio as well. But I think that the things 
that I didn't like about this is it was so much darker than I was expecting it to be. And I really, really disliked Peter Pan. I don't know why. I think that so many people love Peter Pan. I know so many people love this book and I, I just don't get it. And that that's not saying it's, you know, a bad book. I just didn't quite understand it. I thought the beginning was fun, how it was pretty whimsical and just gave you that like light, carefree, childlike feeling. I did enjoy that. And I liked, I found myself enjoying Wendy's character quite a bit, but I don't know. I, I feel like the characters didn't come to life very much in the book. I liked some of what it said, touching upon like childhood and growing up and things like that. I thought that those were really sweet things or really impactful things. But honestly, if I had to, if I had to be honest here, I would say that I was a little bit disappointed after reading this because so many people just rave about it. And for some reason, I just didn't get all the hype of this children's classic. So this is my classic for the month. So in April, I did get to return to reading one classic and one Stephen King. So I'm happy with that, but I don't know. It was still enjoyable. I don't, it definitely don't regret reading it. And I didn't like d dislike my time reading it whatsoever, but just fell a little flat compared to what I was expecting. Next we have The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And I listened to this on audio as well. And I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This was so much fun to listen to. And I actually listened to this immediately following Ender's Game. So it was like perfect. And mid quarantine, this like silly lighthearted story was everything that I needed. It was a laugh out loud fun to me. So if you've never heard of this, basically Earth is about to be destroyed and one of our main character's friends comes and takes him away and they go on this journey through the galaxy together. They just get into mischief. It's very humorous the entire time. I think I mentioned in one of my vlogs, again, it's the type of humor where I was listening to it and you would pause and think, what did, did they just really say that? And then you would laugh because it was just quirky and unexpected humor. Very lighthearted and very fun. I don't think I'll continue on with the series. I didn't like it that much, but I definitely enjoyed my time listening to it. And I think if you are looking for something fun in the sci-fi genre and lighthearted, I definitely recommend picking this one up. Next, we have my first four star read of the month and that is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. And this is her sci-fi novella that I have been told is a standalone and you definitely like it read it reads fine as a standalone so i don't know if it's incorporated in the same world as her other books or not but it is fine to read as a standalone I thought that this was just like so delightful and it was a beautiful story of just like this moment in time following our characters as they kind of explore a new planet. The science was so cool in this book to listen to. It's really short. Like I said, it's a novella. It's not really expanded upon a ton but the little bits that we get to learn is just enough to be super interesting we learn about how science and technology has allowed us to change our bodies in order to adapt to other climates and other planets that we're terraforming and how through like sleep basically how our bodies change over huge spans of time as they're traveling to different planets. I think that Becky Chambers did an excellent job making you care about this character and her friends and her friend group that she's exploring with. In such a short amount of time, I grew to care for these characters and I felt like I really understood their relationships with one another in so few pages. So I was really shocked by that. If I didn't mention, I listened to this on audio as well. So I highly recommend this book. It got pretty scientific at the end to the point where I was like thinking of organic chemistry chemistry that I took last year at U of M. It's nothing like you're not missing out on anything if you didn't pick up on things that she's saying necessarily. But I just I don't know. Delightful is the only word I can think of because this book discussed themes of analyzing the footprint that we leave on our planet and disturbing species for the purpose of research and exploration and science what we are doing to other species in order to gain more knowledge ourselves and is that worth it and is that fair it just discussed a lot of themes like that that i thought were really important and very interesting especially to somebody like me who thinks about those things often and finds it very fascinating to read another author's take on that after reading this book i was just like i want to know everything about becky chambers like i want to know her like scientific knowledge base i want to know like what her interests are and what her views on all of these environments 
environmental topics are. I just think that it would be really interesting. I would love to get to talk to her about these things after listening to this book because of how much I enjoyed what she had to say in such a short amount of time. So I love this. I highly recommend picking it up. The next book I rated a 4.25 out of 5 stars and that is The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. I received an arc of this through NetGalley so I was so excited to get to read this early and this is probably my favorite thing I've read by Mark Lawrence so far just because the writing style is very different from his other books in a good way in my opinion. It's much more modern and much easier to read and follow than maybe his like Prince of Thorns or Prince of Fools series. It just flows nicer in my opinion. So we're following our main character who lives in this very very cold world where there, everything is frozen over and there's like no vegetation or life forms of that type of thing whatsoever. Children who are broken according to the clans are thrown basically into this hole and no one really knows what goes on down there. They just know the children never come back out. And the children that are being thrown down there hope to survive somehow. And I don't want to say how or why, but our main character ends up going down the hole. And it's all about her journey as she gets down there and realizes that Things are not how they seem from above the hole. At first I thought, okay, this is just a fun, like really simple story, but it expanded so much as we progressed through the book. It went into a ton of history and mythology and lore within this world itself. I don't think you need to have read his Book of the Ancestor trilogy in order to read this. I've heard from people who have read it that you don't need to, but I didn't feel lost at all reading it without having finished that trilogy because Mark Lawrence does an excellent job of describing the world, describing the clans, describing the mythology and everything you really need to know is very much expanded upon and explored in this first book. So I really loved that. And then it took almost like a sci-fi twist near the middle or end, like near the second half of the book, I suppose, that I really wasn't expecting, but I found that I really enjoyed that aspect of the book that he added in and it made it really unique. So I think that the strengths of this are definitely the world building and the magic and mythology aspects. I think that's definitely the strengths. The characters were, they were good, but they were just good. They weren't like standout, excellent, really unique or you know characters are really really loved but they were good and they were well written so if the concept sounds interesting to you i would give this one a try next i read the king of crows by libba bray which is book four and the final book in the diviners series and i gave this a 4.5 out of five stars if you guys don't know i've talked about it before but the diviners it's a young adult almost like paranormal fantasy book following this group of kids with powers but it's not like your cheesy powers i know i just said i didn't like that but they have like paranormal diviner type powers. That's cool in my opinion. I love paranormal things dealing with like ghosts or demons, devils, like that kind of thing is really interesting to me. And Libba Bray is just an amazing author. I love everything that she's written that I've read so far. So it just was a little bit drawn out maybe in my opinion. We had some really boring parts. As I've said in my reading blog, if you guys watched it, there were definitely some, there was a lot of text of like random scenes of people just throughout America. America. They were long, they were lengthy to get through and I can see by the end why the author put them in there. It was, it helped us to fully like shape our vision of how America is at this point in time and just the, the way that everyday people are in different areas. But I will say it was kind of boring to get through those parts and it was quite a lot. Like it wasn't just a little bit here and there. It was definitely a significant chunk to get through but she did not disappoint I think that things may be wrapped up a little neater than I would have liked them to and I'm not spoiling it I'm not saying it was a perfect ending by any means I'm just saying that tends to be one of the things I like about adult books so much more is that they're not just so neatly and nicely and conveniently wrapped up so I would have enjoyed maybe if there was a little bit more loss and devastation at the end of this book but that the last section is called epilogue slash prologue and if you've read that, I'm very interested to see what she's writing next because I can only assume that it's going to be something involving that prologue. So very interested to see what that is. The next book, I also gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars, but it's one of my new favorite series that I've been reading. And that is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Eilington, which is book one in the Lycanius trilogy. And this is a story, it's an adult fantasy novel 
I've done a full spoiler free review for it, which I'll link above. And for the sake of time, because I know this is going to be a lengthy video, I'm not going to really talk about it much here since that is spoiler free. So if you want to hear my thoughts about it, just click on that video. All I'll say is I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this one. I think it was a great debut novel and a great first installment in a series. And if you are a fan of book series like The Wheel of Time or you like Brandon Sanderson as an author, I do think that you will enjoy it. And I think this is definitely worth picking up. So check out that review. The next book is another audiobook that I listened to. And that is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. And this is a really short horror novel that completely gripped me. I listened to it so fast because I could not put it down. And I was completely mind blown by the end of the book. I had to do further research into what this book really meant and like what happened. I don't know. Some of you guys told me you were able to predict it. And I was like, what? But I am a reader who generally, I don't try to predict things. I just read things as I go. I don't try to predict. But let me tell you. If you like weird books of twists that most of us will not see coming, I recommend picking this up. I can't really say more than it's like a horror thriller. So we're starting, we're following a female's perspective as she's on this road trip with her boyfriend to go meet his parents and they get there and have dinner and I can't say anything else. I can't even give you a hint or as a clue to what things would make you like this because I think it's best if you just don't know anything at all going into it and you can be completely mindful and like I was. But this is really short. If you have the time, I highly recommend listening to it. I loved it. I almost gave it a five stars. I related so much to the girlfriend in the beginning that it like worried me. But besides this just being a, a horror book, it talked about such important themes like being alone and anxiety and suicide and depression and friendships and all of those topics. So it really hit hard. There's if, if you analyze this deeper, there's definitely a lot of important topics touched upon. Next, I have An Echo of Things to Come by James Eilington as well. This I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars. This is book two in the Lycanius trilogy that I just mentioned. And the author just stepped it up that much more in the sequel. This is a book series where you'll be glad to know there's a glossary and a character glossary and use them, my friend, because I had the ebook, so I didn't notice it until the end. And then when I went back and read the glossary and the character glossary, everything made 10 times more sense. <laughs> So it's a book series where you will feel a little lost and confused as you're going along, but by the end, the author just wraps everything up so clearly and perfect, where you're left wondering and wanting more, but you feel as you have a good enough grasp on what's going on to where it feels worth it to pick up the next one. So I just... I'm obsessed with this series lately. I don't know. I cannot wait to pick up book three. Then we have Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. I gave this a five out of five stars. I read Volume 1 last month and gave it... 4.5 I think but this one was just even more adorable and Charlie just literally melts my heart more than anybody in the whole entire world. I think this is the most perfect cute precious wholesome heartwarming love story ever. If you've never heard of it these two boys are don't really know each other well and then they end up having to work together because they're on the same sports team and they develop this friendship and then clearly you know it's going to turn into more and it is just the sweetest thing like I will never stop reading this as, as long as she keeps publishing more volumes like I will always keep reading it it is so adorable next we have Shore Fall by Robert Jackson Bennett and I gave this a five out of five stars this is the sequel to Foundry Side which made it to my best of the year books last year and I did receive an art copy of this as well so it was very exciting to read Foundry Side deals with a magic system called scribing where basically in metal on objects Certain words are written in a language that gives objects sentience. And so they're, the objects are basically tricked into believing and thinking something so that they have to perform a certain task. It's so unique and cool. And if you were left wanting more from Foundry Side, you're going to get even more explanation and shorefall to the point where I feel like I know how this magic system works so much better now, which is so fun for me as a reader because like I am always wondering why and I want to know why and how things work and, and that type of thing. So I definitely think that he just even improved upon the book in the sequel and I'm definitely dying to know what's going to happen in the third book. I think it is only going to be a trilogy so hopefully we'll get to find out next year but the the found family group, the friendships, 
are expanded upon further in book two. We learn more of backstories and history of characters. We learn more about the gods and the mythology and the past history of basically this entire world. It's just done in a stellar way. Robert Jackson Bennett is a phenomenal author in my opinion and I couldn't give this book anything less than five stars. Next we have Nightfall, Keeper of the Lost Cities number six by Shannon Messenger. I gave this a five out of five stars. This was even better than the previous book and you guys hear me talk about Keeper of the Lost Cities in almost every video so I will spare you guys and I will save my breath. <laughs> Our characters are just growing up and learning more and learning more lessons, becoming more intelligent, but still the same sweet, caring, excellent characters that you know and love. And I just can't recommend this series enough. The stakes are always high, but at the same time, it's this lighthearted world with humor thrown into it. Amazing, amazing characters and friendships and families. And like I said, but the stakes are always high and you never know if someone's going to live or die and you never know like what twists and turns the story is going to take because it's a pretty epic overarching plot at this point at book six. So can't wait to pick up book seven. And the last book, my favorite book of the month is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I'd be surprised if you guys hadn't guessed that by now since I raved about it all month long. I gave this a five out of five stars a 10 out of 5 stars. Um, but I've actually made an entire video talking about this book. So I'm going to, I'm not going to talk about it much here. I think most people probably have heard of this book by now. It's a book that is for readers and book lovers. And it deals with like secret societies and hidden libraries and whimsical magic that is complicated and cannot be explained. And you will not have answers to all of the questions that you're forming throughout reading this book. There's a ton of short stories within this fantasy novel. It has a very, very purple prose. It's very metaphorical in the writing style, but it is absolutely stunning. And I can't say that enough. That's like the only word I can use for it because even if people don't like the book, they will hands down agree that the writing is absolutely gorgeous. So I recommend checking out that video that I'll link above where you can get a little taste of if this book is for you or not. But all I know is it made its way into my favorite book of all time for how much I love it. And as soon as the tattoo shops open back up, I'm getting that tattoo of the bee. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited for that. But those are all of the 16 things that I read in the month of April. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have read any of things as well, what your thoughts were, if they were the same as, or different as mine. Let me know what you guys read in April. I look forward to hearing it. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.